afternoon. Afternoon. Quite a pony you got there. Yes, he's a runner. Indian? Modoc. Oh, they breed him right up there. Except for one thing. Oh, what's that? They don't know how to back up. So if you'll just pull that crockhead off his bridge. Well, now, I'd gladly do that for you, boy, except for one thing. What's that? This one's a Modoc, too. Hot, ain't it? Yeah, you can really raise a sweat this time of year. That's a fine-looking blowpipe you got there. Mexican. That a fact. Got the bite to blow the head off a grizzly. That is, if you get to it in time. Don't need to. Just think it. Eyeball or button I want to pop, and pow. English. Do tell. Core and apple at a half a mile. On the tree or fallen? On horseback. A hurricane. Swenson property. These three sections. Our track goes by it here. You served a notice? Swenson sample worth. The papers went out this morning. Mr. Barclay will see you in his car now, Mr. Crown, sir. At your convenience. How many of your people have you called in? About 200. Keep them chained. I mean that, Hook. Bring them in, you said. 200 hired guns. If and when needed. They'll mop up these hayseeds in one day. And we'll be ripped to shreds. Nothing like brave little men fighting a railroad to wind up public opinion. Tell Mr. Barclay, uh, two minutes. Yes, sir. How are you going to stop it? Stop it? A fight? I can't. But maybe he will. Barclay? Sure. Like his father did six years ago. His father's dead. They're his sons. They still have his horns. Do they, Hook? Are you so sure? Or is it just the name? May I offer you a bite of lunch? I usually don't. No, not really. That's the mark of an ambitious man. It also leads to an ulcer. Eat lunch, Crown's good for your health. Well, what should we drink to? To a new day. No. No, I think I have a better one. To the man who won it. Your lord and master, Hannibal Jordan. Who, with one quick tug of his fat, grubby little fist, makes paupers out of 2,000 men. Think of it, Crown. The genius. 2,000 farmers living on land they settled. Homesteaded, worked. Railroad land. Sold to them. Leased. Sold to them ten years ago at auction, and you know it. You took their case to the legislature. You got your bill out of committee and onto the floor and passed. And vetoed. It was illegal. The governor killed it. Jordan killed it. And now you're preparing a move to rescind. I am. So meanwhile, to peace. You know, Crown, over that hill there, there's a town. Land worked and tilled. Olives, figs, grapes, cattle. That's an awful lot to ask a man to give up. Peacefully. That's what you're going to tell the men? I, Crown? No, oh, you're the one they're going to turn to. You or your brothers, just like they did your father. You'd like to know how I'm going to advise them, is that it? Well, let's say I'd like you to know what will happen if you advise them improperly. How many was it last time, Barclay? Ten dead, twelve? Not even for openers. The day of the spike and iron, is that it? No man can beat it. Well, there's one who's sure trying. Oh, not a chance. 
50. 100. 
What do you mean, you know? I mean, I know what it's like to be without your father. If you tell me the way, I'll uh, be off. There's a trail about 10 yards off in the woods. It'll take you into the road leading up to the ranch. Hey, see my brother Nick. He runs the hiring. I'll do that. By heaven, Nick, I think it's Poet. He's got the look in his eye. <laughs> What's all this about, all these uh, wagons? I got notice from the railroad this morning. Pay or vacate. Who do you mean, they? Swenson, Sampleworth. They're inside. Silas! Mr. Buckley! <laughs> By heaven, you get younger every day. Shh! Your mama, she's sleeping. You look fine, Mr. Barkley, just fine. How is Frisco? Uh, balmy, Silas, fair and balmy. <laughs> Jared. Sig, how are you? Frank, Abe, Jared. Uh, ain't you something to see, though? <laughs> yeah, you really gave it to him up there, huh? Sure he did, I told you that. Hey, these papers, they're bluffing, huh? $25 an acre. From my own land. Pay or they sell it out from under me. <laughs> Who's that railroad think they're trying to bluff? By midnight tonight, huh? Yeah, ain't that the note of it, though? Frank, yours? Till late in the morning. Noon tomorrow. I was gonna feed this thing to my goat, but I figured, hey, I ought to show it to you first for a laugh. So that's how they're hitting him, one at a time. Yeah, they think they can. What do you mean, hitting us, Jared? I thought you knew. What? You saw the governor. You said you were going to meet with him? I saw the governor. Oh, my God, no. He vetoed it. I'm sorry. Well, it ain't legal. It can't be. Not by any moral standard, I know. But it's legal. $25 an acre. How am I ever going to raise that much money? How many men do you have to hire? Why? 35, 40? We can match that sig in one hour. For what, Frank? Fight him, Jared. He's right. Just like we did before with your daddy. And who do you think you'd be fighting, Sig? A half dozen mud hogs off a flat car? No. Go into town and take a look. It's crawling with them. They've hired themselves an army. You ask us to give into it, Jared? Is that what you ask him? Give up all we own? My house, my field? Now, all this boy's buried by that house. I give that up? Frank, I think you know me better than that. Nick, what time's that courthouse open in the morning? How would I know? Nine. All right. Now, first thing in the morning, I'll initiate injunctive procedures. That'll give us time to weigh our moves. Now, don't worry, boys. Nothing's gonna happen. Not tonight, anyway. Let's talk tomorrow. Frank, can you be here? Yeah. If you say so. Good. Suppose we, uh, suppose we make it at this time, six o'clock. Abe? All right, Jared. Sig? Yeah. Now, let's have a drink before you go. Drink? No, I got a wet a field down. Thatcher and Schmidt, maybe I can bring them in. They're good men. Frank, suppose you talk to them. Drink. Drink. Yeah. Whiskey or scotch? Well, it's always been scotch. Well, now, I wasn't sure what other taste you might have changed. Whatever that's supposed to mean. Injunctive procedures. Who do you think you're kidding? 
There isn't a court around here the railroad doesn't own. It's fight or nothing. Well, that's fine, Nick. That's just great. You go ahead. Go on it, there. That's the way you've always done it. Well, those tactics may work in a barroom brawl, but they won't work here. This is the state you're swinging on, boy, or maybe you think you're up to it. Now, Eugene, you tell him. Well, there's right to what both of you say. I don't know. I just got to think about it. That's right, kid. You go ahead and think. You think while the barn's burning down. Now, just a minute. Jared. Jared, darling, how nice to see Hello, you. Hello, Mother. I'm ashamed of myself. I should get down to visit you. Oh, you're putting on weight. Well, Nick, Tom, dear I... Nick, must you shout at the top of your lungs when I'm trying to take my afternoon nap? Now, where's Audra? She knows enough to be in before dark. Jared, I do wish you'd speak to her. I'm afraid she has her father's flair for rebellion. Oh. Kindly see to your visitor. I'll enjoy your company at dinner. Something for you? Mr. Barkley, if you know where I can find him. Take your choice. Well, I was told Nick does the hiring. Of what? Well, Lion Boss, Haywaddy, Asher, Cowprod, Jingler. You name it, I've done her. What's your name? Keith. I was on that train this afternoon. Quite a race. No contest. Not the way those cabbage stacks come off a turn. Where are you from? West of the Divide. How west? Pretty much all over. Last place you worked? Corning. Sign him on, Nick. To what? We're full. Oh, well, he did me a little favor this afternoon. Sign him on. Now, take your gear over the bunkhouse, see McNally. Tell him to sign you on. Let's hear it. Well, you just name the tune and I'll try to hum it. Corning. Nice town. Last place you worked? That's right. That's a hundred miles from here. So? You usually travel a hundred miles between jobs with a dozen likely spreads on the way, huh? I asked you a question, boy. All right, you're no more a trail than a Modoc. All right, let's hear it, boy. The truth. What are you doing here? <laughs> Here, boy, the railroad. Crown. Jordan. They sent you, didn't they? No man sends me anywhere. Bastard son.
and dunked in a stream and near killed by a train. Now, this one's gonna be peaceful, you hear? So this is what it is. Well, I wondered. Well, the old stud himself. Boy, howdy, don't he look proper. You know, I bet they buried him in those clothes with his buttons all shine and his hair all spitting slickered and a rose in his teeth and the honey bees buzzing. Oh, now that's all. Nick, I'll bet a band played and I was singing and wailing and ever so good a time and some parson reading. But they buried my mama. But it weren't in refinement and no thousand people weeped over her grave. But in a potter's field like she was nothing human or flesh. The night I was born, she was alone, tent, in a rotten rat hole of a mining camp up to Stanislaus. And the rain beat down and turned the straw to mud. Do you know what she was? She was warm and gentle. And left to her own when her husband got liquored up and drowned in some stinking creek. Until he came. How long ago was this? Twenty-four years. Where? In a mining camp. You told us that. What mining camp? Strawberry. Now, come on, you know there was a lot of men in those camps. You know the kind of women... Nick! There was only one of my mother. Just the simple, sweet, innocent little... What my brother is clumsily trying to determine is when you came to here... A month ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. What happened a month ago? My mother died. Confessions from a deathbed. Nick, that'll be enough! Well? up on the Klamath. They called for me, said she was sick, she was dying. She never talked about it, who my father was, not in all these years. But it was something she wanted me to know, something she couldn't take to her grave. There was a Bible in a box, told me to get it. He said, turn to the back, to the last page. I started to, and this fell out. I picked it up, and I read it. And I looked at her, and she was gone. Is it? All of it? It's one piece of paper. He was my father. All right, boy. You don't believe me. Get his horse, Eugene. You're not dumping me the way he dumped her. Keep your voice down! You put together a very touching story. Not convincing, touching. However, considering whom it might hurt, even though it is a lie, I'm willing to pay. 300, 400, what'll you take? What I'm entitled to. A name, a heritage, Part of it all. What's mine? All right, boy, now you listen to me. I want you out of this house, off this place, and out of this valley. And know this. If I ever lay eyes on you again, I'm going to finish what I started tonight.
Hurt, you're lucky you're not dead, you little fool. What were you doing out there? Well? Nobody talks to me like that. Not ever. No? No. Try them. I heard my brothers talking about it. What was in town, I wanted to see. I don't believe me. Sit down. You're a rough one, aren't you? Crossed a few years. It's what I've always wanted to do. See places like you have. Do what I want, no matter whatever. Still. My brother Nick. He takes nothing from anyone. You're telling me. That's how I'd like to be. My father was like that. <laughs> My mother thinks I'm shameless. Jared says I'm spoiled. Nick, he understands. You're like me. Some guy really put his fingernails into you. Get some soap to that when you get home, you hear? Is that where you're taking me? Home? Yeah, I think we've both had ours for the night. Have we? I guess you know where you were. Hello. In a room. With a man. It's the first time. Say one thing for that old bear. He bred them wild. All of it, everything you told them, lies. Well, I don't fancy his breeding, miss, and it's no pride I got in him for a daddy. But it's a proud name, and it's mine. And I'm gonna wear it, and people, boy, howdy, they're gonna look up to me, just like your brothers. And everything that's Barkley, I'm gonna be too. I told you, man. Oh, boy, this is work for men. I'll let you explain to your family, Miss Barclay. They can explain to me. We're all right from here, Sheriff. Thank you. Yeah, you're new at the Barclays, aren't you? We saw me right out. He came after. So you said, Miss. What's your name? Heath. Heath what? That's Winston's place. Guns and torches, hollering out like wolves. And I just stood there aside and watched them do it. Well, not my place. And hanged, I'll be after paying for what I own. I got a paper here that says I have to do just that. By 8 o'clock in the morning. Or have my place took out from under me. Well, I ain't. You hear? I ain't. Who stands with me?
No one stands with you, Frank. I'm sorry. But legally, after tomorrow, the land's no longer yours. Nick. Jared. Eugene, listen. Six years ago, your daddy and mine fought and died for this because your daddy said it was right to fight. And what did it gain you? Any one of you. And your father and yours. Ten others dead. Six years of false hope. I bow to no man in my regard for Tom Barkley. But he was only a man. He couldn't fight a giant and win. Any more than can you. Or you. Or any man. So worship him. Pray for him. But follow him. You follow a dead man to his grave. Is that true? What he said? Your daddy gave us nothing? No way to fight? Never did. you most of my life and respected you enough to be honest any man that comes to try to take that farm he's gonna be killed sorry to hear that because I'm going to be with him He was an imperfect man, my husband. And in so many ways, that could hurt him. But he never destroyed, only built and gave life. For he knew that what he brought was a changing way. A revolution of its own that said, you are a free man. No one, not Railroad, nor Jordan, nor Thomas Barclay can own you. And he knew it was something you won only with courage, pride, and leadership. That's what he tried to instill in his son. If you hadn't ridden away tonight, you would have seen that he accomplished that. It's not a battle that can be won in a day, a year, or even ten. And then one day he made a terrible, wretched mistake. He died. Before anyone really understood. And so, if you were my son, I would say to you, be proud. Because any son of my husband has a right to be proud. Live as he would live, fight as he would fight, and no one, no one can deny you his birthright. That's what I would say to you. If you were my son.
tried to run for cover, but these claws were ripping right into my back, and the teeth were hitting my neck. Now, I've been up against some cats before. How'd you get out? Her husband came home. <laughs> what time is it? Ten minutes to eight. Yeah. Jared. Nick. Get with them. Far enough, Harry. At 8 a.m., by order of the governor of the state of California... We know what it says, Harry. The power vested in me as sheriff of this county... We know what it says. <laughs> Frank, these people have been empowered as agents of the Coastal and Western to take possession of your property. I'll be dead first. Now, Frank, you listen. All of you, listen. These men have been duly sworn and deputized. And everyone with the right to do as they see fit if they're defied. Frank, you've got families. And that must mean something you think of your people. In the name of God, Jared. Nick. You have no way. Jared, tell him. Get out of this, Harry. You men are asking to be killed. You're fighting for something you haven't a chance of winning. The courthouse opens at 9. Will you wait?
morning, dear. Good morning, Mother. I was under the impression, Nicholas, that food is not eaten until grace. Bless these. Further, that such is not spoken until the entire family has assembled. Well, now that does raise a point. None that was not discussed quite thoroughly and well into last night, as I recall. Now, wait a minute. That story of his, do you really want it taken apart? I'll get him. Sit down. Nicholas, please, your voice. I can take that story of his apart piece by piece. Tell him. Well, just what I said. Silas, we seem to be shy of Lennon. Would you please? Yes, ma'am. Just like that, we pick up a brother, right? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Not quite just like that. Well, if that boy's a Barkley, he has a job to learn. And I'm going to make sure he knows what it is. That little war at Samples Farm, that wasn't a war. That was a pea shoot compared to what Crown can pull off down here. And I'll tell you something. I'll give Crown just six weeks to nurse his wounds. That's a billion dollar haul he can make out there. And he's not gonna blow it over 20 dead men. And the rest of it, water to bring down out of the hills. And I can think of a few that would like to stop that. This valley is gold. And every son of a jackal's gonna put his filthy mitts in it and try to grab it. Hoodlums pouring out of Frisco like locusts and out of the gold fields. Red-eyed, washed-out losers hot to tear the world apart for their luck and crops and lumber and feed and transportation and roads to keep open. And let's make one thing very clear. This is a working ranch and he pulls his weight. And that means up in the morning every morning with the rest of the crowd at five o'clock and sweat. Just let him come to me just one time with a dry shirt on his back. Got a section of fence out and a patch of mesquite to clear that's just begging for fire. And that bridge has got to be fixed before my Modoc breaks a leg, which I don't cotton to have it. Where the devil you been? You start with the bridge or the mesquite. Take your choice. Thank thee for thy blessings, for the food on this table, and for thy boundless love. Those cattle. Bad, take up the drag. Let's go. 
today, Barrett. You got a horse. Get back to that herd. I gave you an order. I take my orders from Barclays, not from a... Not from what? Not from what, Barrett? You hop on that herd or you're trapping the flats. <laughs> That brand. He's romping yarn. That B don't stand for Barkley. Not in your hide. You're through. Pick up your pay and get out. Anybody else feel like looking for work? I swear you're the only man I know who'd step out of a bath and look like he was just dragged by a horse. It might do you some good to eat a little dust once in a while. Uh, I'm a lawyer, remember? I only eat crow. It's a herd all in. <clears throat> well, don't tell me I'm here too late to help. Help? Great. Stackyard, we need a man. I thought you had a full crew. I got it. Down one, I fired a man. And I hired him back. Hey, Berber, you go out there and tell him to take it easy with those fires. I don't count and have any stack piles going up, huh? What happened, Pete? Gave an order. He didn't obey it fast enough to suit me. Handle him. I handled him. Give him the sack. Seemed to be the way. You got a job for a man to do, and he doesn't do it, you get him to do it. That's handling him. Now you go out and tell Mac to put a double guard in that hole tonight. That herd's restless. Nick. Yeah. That was a mistake you just made. Oh, now, what are you talking about? You were wrong. Oh, come on. Wrong. I've got 3,000 head of cattle, 550 miles to drive in, 24 days, with 40 hands that know which end of the cow to prod, and not just our cows, Jared, but Card, Coven, Royce, and Fries, still biting their nails because they had to throw their cattle in with us. Nobody gets fired. Nick, you chopped his legs off right at the knees. I'd have done it to you, and you'd have done it to me. It's not the same. We're all Barclays, aren't we? We were born to the name, Nick. That gives us immunity. I've got 24 days, Pappy. So know this, that herd comes first. I can't hardly work flank when I've been told to pick up my pay. <laughs> so old Nick, he bursts. He says, pick up your pay, he says. Call. Yo? Nick wants two more men to ride guard on that herd tonight. Rodale? Chad? I'll be taking it. With Barrett. Whose thought is that? 
mine. Well, I've had me a day. I expect I'll pass. McCall. Yeah? Get the men outside. All right, everybody. Move it. Bird, sit down. Son, don't do the cook, too. You're gonna ride guard on that herd tonight. If I have to carry you out. I have had it with you, boy. Now, you can diddle them all you want up there in that high house, but to me, you're trash. Up out of that dirt, just like Lillard and Brown and Shad or me, you're no better. You're sightless to be given orders. I ain't taking no bossin' from a dead man's dirt. Get him out of there. Go on.
believe it. Who is he? Do you know him? You people, you three. Get this man out of the dirt. Your room is a disgrace. Oh, he's the most fabulous thing I've ever seen. A general. Nick says he practically won the and war by himself. change your clothes before you come to dinner. So you were with 104th at Benton's Crossing. Six days. Pinned down for six days in that lousy swamp with nothing to eat but bark and moss. But you held that swamp until you broke through. You held it so that I could break through. An act of supreme heroism. <clears throat> oh, Mother. Mother, this is General Wallet. Mrs. Barkley. My son has admired you for years. You've justified your reputation. Oh, hardly, madam. I was just passing south and uh, trespassed quite uninvited to gain my bearings. The rest, coincidence. The mark, I suspect, of most heroics. I suspect otherwise. You're staying the night, of course. Well, I, I hardly... My room. Silence! I'll tell him. I'll bunk in the guest room. Excuse me, I must see to dinner. I, uh... I assume you'll be dining with us. Well, uh, the last I heard of you, General, you were on the frontier. Six years. What brings you west? To California? Still with the Army? Forever the Army. Hmm. Well, you have me more than intrigued, sir. Well, then I apologize, because there is nothing as rude as to intrigue and then be forced to remain silent. My horse never quartered so well, I'm sure, has an injury to his shin. You mind if I have a look at him before? Oh, I yes, of course. I'll uh, see the wine. Oh, Brianna, 55. 55, really? That's not hospitality, that's homage. <laughs> Quite a guy. Oh, he could sure raise Ned with the brass. <laughs> but he could win battles and men. Better than any man I ever met. Um, what happened out there today? Well, it's you and me on this drive. I got nobody else. The men don't know the country. I've only walked it once. I'm going to need your head. We'll bury the thing, all right? All right, Nick. That horse. I've seen it before. Wallen's horse? The last two weeks since I've been here. Oh, now, how could you? I... You heard him say he was just passing through. From where? None of your business. Or mine. Here's the Johnston. Pioneer Ridge. You bet. <laughs> you boys are really something. It's the only time I ever took a ball in the back of my chest running away from musket fire. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you get that? Private? It ain't private. Oh. This mongrel Heath rides in here about two weeks ago. Heath? Heath Barkley? Barkley? He's no Barkley. He's more than I am. Old man whelped him in a mining town. Yeah, he started in giving orders like he owned a mint. Yeah, yeah, he did, yeah. I thought uh, Nick ran things. Nick, yeah, he's fine. Squashed him like a boot heel on a tater bug. Oh, Nick, he knows. First time there's a duster, I'll make a bet. Heath makes tracks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he gave you what for. Oh, yeah. Wait, 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 wait a minute. This man was at Pioneer Ridge. He gave what he got. 
That's right. What about the rest of you, sir? The war, I mean. Any of you in it? Bull Run. I make that most. Sup, old Spock here. Still trying to hook us that that Mexican coyote shoot back in the 40s was a fight. <laughs> well, it was a fight. It was, and I ain't forgot what I know. What do you know, Spock? How to take a yaki with my bare hand. I blow a bridge, got a town. You sound like you miss it. Man miss anything he does well. I know what you did. Pepper tails. <laughs> <laughs> What about you? Ordnance. Telegrapher. Artillery. Coherent mortars? Coherns. Dogren. Anybody here know how to take out a train? Yeah. What do you use? Blasting powder and coffee gun. What if you got no powder? Log jammer on a turn. Put some ice on that. It'll cut the pain. Night, General. Good night, sir. Thank you, sir. We'll bed down here at the Kern River for a day, and then up over these mountains, and it's home free to San Diego. Those mountains, quite a climb. There's a slight grade for about 10 miles or so, but nothing cattle can't take. Water? Prettiest lake you ever saw right up here on top. I like it. It's good. I, I like it a lot. In other words, you want out, right, Sam? Well, Jared, I didn't say that. Uh, we went all through this two months ago. We told you then the Army had offered $15 a head more than the Kansas City price for all the steel we could deliver to San Diego. We talked to you, Sam. You and all the others said you wanted in. Royce and Carr. And Fries. In this morning, penned and tallied. I lost that herd, Jared. Be over my dead body. Run him in. McCall, you ride gate horse, and Heath, run Sam's herd in. Well, this ace is over. Let's howl at the wind. Nick, that, um, that lake there at the top, greatest coffee water you ever drank. It's not a lake. What? What do you mean, it's not a lake? It's a runoff. Well, I was there. That was spring, Nick. This is August. It's high desert country. Well, there's not a particle of water in those hills, not for 100 miles. Your lake, Nick, is nothing but barrel cactus and sage. Would you excuse us, gentlemen? I sense the conversation's about to become masculine. I don't mind. Audra, would you get my sewing basket? There seems to be a button missing at the top of your dress. Yes, and east along the base of these hills. Well, that's all desert. You can't go over the mountains. You got to go around them through Mint Canyon. There's water there. It's longer, but you can make up the time. Oh. I thought you knew this territory. Well, not this territory. Surely some of your men. None of my men have been south of Fresno. I think what my brother is subtly trying to suggest is that since you're traveling south yourself in the morning... that I go along with him? Oh, no, I'm sorry, gentlemen. I'd be nothing but a nuisance. Well, that's hardly the word, General. Well, if you can tolerate a man who doesn't know a drag from a flank, done. Good, wonderful. I'll get in touch with McCall and have him set you up for tomorrow morning. It's going to be lonely here the next few weeks. You and Nick on the drive, and Jared back to San Francisco, Eugene off to college. Audra will. Whoever knows where Audra is. Yes, ma'am. Oh, now we're going to have to do something about that. I've been many things to many people, but never ma'am. What's wrong, Heath? Nothing. Oh, no, no, not that, not to me. Trouble with the men? I can handle the men. Heath, you don't have to prove anything to anybody. You proved who and what you are two weeks ago in that fight against Coastal and Western. Now, how many men did they have? 60, 80 hired gunmen against a handful of farmers and my sons. You fought with them, and we won. That horse. What are you talking about? That horse was there. 
Hollingsworth? At Sample's place with those hired guns. Are you sure? You don't forget a horse like that. Have you told Nick? No, Nick wouldn't believe it. He thinks Wallet's a saint. And you can't prove otherwise? No. Nor can I. Oh, take care, Heath. Take care. You're late, friend. General. In my country, when a man is no longer in the army, he's no longer a general. General. You have them? Of course. How many? Thirty. Henry's. That's what I could get. I want Winchester's. And so I would like to be president. It's impossible. So it's impossible. General, I'll talk to my people. Tell them I want 40, not 30. 40? You have so many men as 40? I'll have them. Against the Arikaras, you had 200. All dead. When are the 40? When you have the Winchesters. They'll be there for you at the Kern. With all the rest of it? Of course. Something more? I want you to kill a man. <laughs> days. That's good. Feels good, Nick. Hey, Heath. Heath, don't unsaddle yet. I want you to... My back. My back. 
Don't shoot. Lillard, Chad, up here. He was helpless. Helpless? Except for what he could tell. Every snake has two fangs. Remember that. bullet from a drunken yaki. Not a lousy bullet, Nick. It's in the bone. Well, there's doctors in Bakersfield. You'll be there by morning. Well, it's, it's all yours, Heath. I won't forget that, Nick. No, no. Nick, we'll see each other again. Dib, let's get out of here, huh? Take a circle, will you, Mac? Close them in. Yeah. I'll lay out a route you'll want to leave early in the morning. We're not leaving in the morning. I beg your pardon. I think we'll stay over another day. What for? Scout that lake, up that grade on top of those mountains. I believe I told you that lake is... I know what you said. There's no water. I kind of believe there is. Why would I lie? Well, maybe to make yourself necessary. To whom? To the men. In case anything happened to Nick. <laughs> They're your men. That's a fact. <coughs> What do you think you're going to do here? I don't roast you, boy! Yeah. You the fellow likes fires, I recall. I was only funning. Now look, Chad. Chad. Will I ever give it to you, boy? A hundred yards to make the river. Ah! Drop it, Chad. Put it down. Put it down. Well, you two fellas got all that energy. Let's just ride guard tonight. We rode guard last night, four hours. I'm not talking about four hours, Barrett. I'm talking about eight. All night? Now you got one hour to get your dinners and get back to that herd. Anybody else feel like extra detail? Let me know. Well, that rips it. I have had it up to here. You understand that? Who goes with me? Lily? Spock. Shad? What are you? Pack a stock for him to beller and prod at? Him? You ain't had enough, Brown, huh? You want more? Where do you want them to go, Barrett? Well, I ain't staying with this. There are other spreads. Eight or ten dollars a month. How much do you make? Twelve. Top pay, unless... Unless what? Unless you're a man who can take out a train. What are you talking about? More money in a month than you make in a year. Well, what? Man knows how to run a mortar, telegraph key, gut a town, blow a bridge. Dinner? Suddenly I found that I have developed an appetite.
shed and pack of strays downstream. Pick them up. Spock, saddle up. We're going to scout this ridge for water. OK, let's move it. Why don't you say I'm golden? Yeah. Now, you heard him move out. Oh, we're going to move out all right. We'll move out. You know all of these things, right? Well, what do we got here? <laughs> what did he offer you, Shad? <laughs> what they fought through four years of war to find. That's right. No ordinary men satisfied to return to their farms and their ranches, their jobs, and live a small, insignificant life. You that? Dissatisfied men, Barkley, yearning and searching for a place. A place of their own, and rightfully so, because they had the courage to seek it. That's right. right. You're right. You're right. You're right. And, he's and you're going to give it to them? Yes, yes. he is. <laughs> Where? There's in Mexico. Right? Mexico. Yes. Right. So that's what it's all that's about. Right. That's right. Hired assassins. Volunteers. Volunteers. Off to fight for a Mexican terrorist. No. No. Patriot. No. And for what? Half we get. That's yeah. half. Yeah. 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 Oh, no, no. Yeah. More than land, boy. A province, my province, yours and mine. Yeah. All that you've ever dreamed of owning for yourself, not working for somebody else, and what's more, 100 square miles of water and green. <laughs> and how much of that do you think you're going to see? Hey, listen, all we have it. all we want to hear from you. That's right. All of it. A six by three foot grave. Oh, no. You follow him and you go to your death. Oh, That's God. all the value you are to him. Oh, no? Oh, no. Ask him why he was at Sample's no. place with the Coastal and Western oh, Railroad. Oh, fought against us. Yeah, no, he no. fought against us. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, Ask him why oh, Nick was shot. Because he ordered it. Ordered it? Knowing you'd never break away from Nick as long as he was here. Do you hear that, boys? I saved men from the swamps and the fires to have them shot. <laughs> <laughs> I offer you freedom. I offer you manhood. I offer you everything that a courageous man can achieve. Are you with me? Yes! Yeah! Barrett, I need 10 men to come with me. You others pick up the rest of the men at the herd. We'll meet you at the Camino Real crossing at noon. Oh, and um, nothing stolen. Not even a calf. Right. Here we go. Get all that brown. And here in the saddle. Hey. I'll need a wagon. I think a 20 should cover it. Barkley. Hold your fire. Don't shoot. This place is a powder keg. I'll kill you, Wallant. If I have to. Unless? I want those men back. Men are not given, Barkley. They're earned. Or stolen. <laughs> oh, Barkley. What a lot you've got to learn. Some people want to be stolen. Don't you know that? It relieves them of all responsibility for their impotence and weakness. Men are sheep, Barkley. These men are all sheep. Going willingly to the slaughter. Preferring it rather than facing their own inadequacy and failure. 
Well, and what are you? Take you, for example. What a curious place to make one stand. In a coffin. Think about it. Barkley? Yeah. Barrett, Spark, you draw his fire. Shad, you come in from the east. The sun to your back. They'll keep him occupied. Take him through the door. Sir? And keep your fire high. Get him back. Brown, Sir. Lillard, you two men, fan out. On my shot, take him. Take him? Head on. Boys, this is no good. It's only Rebs out there on that line. So it's yells and musket fire and up. Because it's never. Not once, not now. Not this one part of the ridge. Are they ever going to say that Walland was stopped? So we take them. <laughs> then. It's letters to your sweethearts and your wives. And medals, boy. And whiskey from the officer's table. I always did that for you. You know that I did. So we take them now, boys. And then... yards, boys. That's all it is. Just ten more.
Wallen. Give me the gun. Please. After we do what we gotta do here, I figure we can still make the cattle up that grade, Mr. Barkley. Not only water in that dry lake, but you are to see the trout, the size of your feet. Uh, is that with or without his boots on? You were saying about the steer. Yeah, listen, we got this lop horn. That crazy red. Well, anyway, all the way down, somebody always had to be hazing back to the herd. When we get to San Diego, wouldn't you know it? We couldn't get him on the car. That's a mighty big cloud he's on in there. He did a mighty big job. And burst a big bubble. Yeah. Nick. There's always something tragic about a fallen idol. Because the tragedy, you see, is that it makes us wonder how we could have been so wrong. Worship idols, Nick. All do and must do. But never, never believe their light is brighter than your own. This ranch is yours, Nick. Yours to rule. So are the men. By your choice and your decisions. A doctor, aren't you? Oh, I cured an ego or two in my day. <laughs> Fish as long as my foot. What? Keith, how long did you say that fish was? Boy, howdy, Nick, I tell you, as long as your arm. Cure that, doctor. Smarter. They're going to be unveiling a statue of me right in the center of campus. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, listen, when you wrote and told me what they were doing to honor father, well, I was so proud I could buzz. Well, we didn't know about it ourselves just a couple of days ago. <laughs> Dave Wallace wrote over and calmly said, if we didn't mind, the townspeople would like to do something to honor father. If we didn't mind. <laughs> Welcome home, Mr. Eugenius. <laughs> my, my, you've grown a whole foot. Oh, I hope not, Silas. Now, wait in there. I'll be right with you. Come on in here, Gene. Let's take it. Get in Right over there. That's it. Now, turn around here, boy. Let's see what's been what's happening this? to you. You know, Nick, I think he's grown a little bit. Oh, just in the head. Oh, he always did have a bit of a fat head. Well, now, is that so? Hey, where's he? Oh, he's around somewhere. I think I'll go out and sign him up. <laughs> Sit down right over here. Gene, Sit Mother down. said you were to wait. Oh, wait for what? Uh, just wait. Ah, here we are. Father's? Mm -hmm. He wore them on special occasions. I know you think I'm being sentimental, but it would make me very happy if you would wear them this evening at the commemoration. I'll have you know I often cut off my big toe, but... Uh... <laughs> and I'm a size larger than Jared, so it's up to you, little brother. Now, sit down there and slip them on. Come on. Yeah, I'll try. They uh, look a little small. Well, come on now. Let's see what happens. Come on. Come on, Eugene. I'm trying it. Mm. Come on. They're a little too tight. Come yeah, on, pull Gene. them on. Come Whoa. on. Mm. A little harder. Oh, I'm sorry, Mother. Oh, it was a silly, sentimental idea to begin with. Oh, no, no, no. Hey, what about Heath? Well, 
He's a Barclay son, too. He'd wear them. I know he would. He'd be proud to wear them. Silas, did you, Gene, get in? In there. Ha. Gene, you old son of a gun. How are you? <laughs> Boy, how do you have grown a foot? Well, it seems that all that knowledge went to my feet. They were father's feet. Mother'd like one of us to wear them to the commemoration this evening. Well, go ahead, try them on. Looks like the best foot wins, huh? <laughs> Congratulations, Heath. <laughs> Heath, it seems to me we have forgotten one small detail. Whether or not you'd like to wear them. Well, uh, sure I would. Of course I would. Why wouldn't I? It's uh, just that... I'd like to have a chance to think it through. I don't much go for fancy boots. Maybe some other time. Get up off that bed. Now, if you'll just simmer down. Gene, I don't want to fight you. All right, now, take it easy. If I were in his shoes, I might feel the same way. So might you. Now, get it. I said I might feel the same way. If you're going with us, you better get dressed. If you'd rather not go, we'll all understand. Maybe it's hard for me to forgive Tom Barkley for what he did. But whatever he was to me, to my mother, I know he was a great man to the people in this valley. So as a part of this family now, I'd kind of like to go along and honor him for that, if it's all right with you.
I'm sure it's the most beautiful statue in the world. Just wait till it's unveiled. It's a little early in the morn to start celebrating. I'm sorry. The last thing in the world I want to do is hurt you. Maybe I shouldn't have come. But I thought it, I could just sit on what I feel, at least for one day, this day. I brought them with me, the boots. You'd wear them? Say the word. I told you I understood how you feel. Maybe I more than understand. Maybe I'm afraid you have a right to feel the way you do, but thank you for offering. I'd do anything for you. Anything, you know that, don't you? And I meant what I said. Whatever he was to me, to my mother, I know he was a great man to others, to his children, to you. He was a great man. A wonderful father. A wonderful father and husband. I never meant for you to question that. Tell me about your mother. She was beautiful, warm and soft, and in a way very strong, like you. And your father? Of course, you never knew who he was until the end, but... Did she ever talk about him, the man who was your father? I don't remember. But you must have asked. When you were a little boy growing up, you must have wondered. It's over. History, ancient history. Don't dig it up. And if I have to... We'd only been married a few years when Tom went to Strawberry. He'd invested in some mines. We weren't rich then, but Strawberry was the beginning. He sold his interest, made a good profit, and went on from there. Yes, Strawberry was the beginning. Did your mother love him? Oh, please, Heath, I've got to know. When I was a boy, Strawberry was a boom town, busting with life. Then the mine slowly gave out. Now it's all but a ghost town living with memories. When I was a boy, it seemed my mother laughed a lot, talked a lot about him, talked in a way that made me think my father was the greatest man who ever lived. If he did love her, then I've been lying to myself, haven't I? You can't say that. Whatever he was to my mother, you know what he was to you. Do I? Can I ever be sure? Do any of your people still live in Strawberry? Just ain't Rachel. Rachel Caulfield. She's not my real aunt, but she's all the family we ever had, or needed. She was my mother's best friend, and mine. Aunt Rachel and Hannah, they, uh, they helped raise me. There was no one else? Not that I can remember. If there was, they, uh, they left long ago. There is somebody else, but... Tell me. My Uncle Matt and his wife. We weren't close. I hardly ever saw them, and 
That was too often. Please, let it die. And sometimes, sometimes a thing just won't die. Your father and I were married so happily for over 25 years. And if most of those years I was lying to myself, oh, Heath, I've just got to know. For both of us. Looks really run out. I can't even be myself a solitaire. I'm gonna pay you. I think I'm gonna run out of time sticking with a couple of beers. Three today, two from yesterday, when you was uh, a little short. George, I ain't never tried to beat you up. Now, don't tell me your well, troubles. I ain't getting rich around here, neither. I'd like to get paid tomorrow, not the after tomorrow. Tomorrow or no more beer. Well, you lose your way, man? Oh, not if this is strawberry. Well, it was strawberry, but now, well, you name it. I'm looking for a woman named Rachel Caulfield. Rachel Caulfield. Do you huh? happen to know her? Oh, knew her real well. Yeah. Knew? Well, she's dead. Oh, well, uh, when did it happen? Oh, about a month and a half ago. How? Oh, well, she's dead, ma'am. That's all I know for sure. Uh, it's mighty hot out there. Could I sell you something no, cool to drink, no, maybe? Uh, with... Do you know a woman named Hannah? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, a little uh, green cabin, uh, picket fence in front, right out the edge of town. Oh, Can't hardly you. miss it. Oh, uh, could I sell you something cool no, to drink, right. maybe? You look like you... Mighty handsome woman, Martha. Too much woman for him. Um, I, uh, can I give you a hand? <laughs> You'd like to, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, that's no secret. Hey, why don't we, uh, why don't we go away together? Find ourselves a new life, a good life. said, a lot of women. You know, uh, you're the only thing that keeps me tied to this town. Oh, all the time I thought you're counting on finding a good vein of ore. Yeah. And I'll bet if I did hit pay dirt, you'd come running to me, wouldn't you? Maybe, but you're not going to find, uh, find it sitting there polishing that rifle and uh, shooting the sign across the street. 
thought I told you not to fire that thing in here. Is that right, man? You ought to know better to let him do that. Sure. Because one day he's going to kill somebody and they're going to march in here and sue us for every cent we haven't got. We got something to talk about and I'll get him out of here. Uh, Mr. Phelps, I think the man would like you to leave. Hmm. Is that right? Ain't you got nothing better to do than hang around here wasting our time? What's the matter, Matt? You expecting a big rush of business? Like maybe one check-in? Like I said, Mr. Phelps, if it's gold you're looking for, you're not going to find it in here. Well, maybe not gold. But there are other things. If you're looking at me, I'm not about to exchange one failure for another. <laughs> now, clear out. My husband wants to talk to me alone. You said I was leading him on. Now, what did you want to talk to me about? She's here, Strawberry. Victoria Barclay. You sure? She asked Walter where Rachel was. Wally should have sold her a shovel and told her to start digging. Don't laugh about that, Martha. Don't you ever laugh about all right, that. All right, Matt, I won't laugh. <laughs> but I'm not going to cry over spilt milk either. She went over to see Hannah. She'll ask questions. Sniff around. Oh, what does Hannah know? And whatever she suspects, a half-mad old woman like that. <gasps> hey, Matt. Maybe. Maybe it was Providence that brought Victoria back to here. Oh, Martha. Uh, after what happened, I thought we decided. You we decided. No. You, you, you decided. Because you're a man with the spine of a worm, I let you make that decision. But now that she's here. No matter what a reason, she's come to us. <laughs> I'm not about to let her slip through my fingers. Pardon me. Miss Lee. Lord in heaven, Miss Lee. For a minute, I thought you was Heath's mother. Miss Lear. She dead. And Rachel, she dead too. Both my good friends is dead. Maybe they killed me too. Who you be? I'm Victoria Barclay, and you're Hannah. Heath told me about you and Rachel. You know about Heath? He lives with me now, with me and my family. He all right? Oh, he's fine. This, that's all that matters. He's fine. That's all that matters. He's fine. Heath tells me you and Rachel helped raise him. Me help. Miss Leah, she work hard. But a boy growing up without a father. Do you remember his father? It was different then. Everything different. Miss Leah, she was young. And so pretty. Could have most any man. She picked that one. Then you knew him? He'd give her a child, his child, and he'd go away and leave her, never come back. He was married, did you know that? People say. She bad. A woman have a baby with no father to claim him. People say she bad. 
Did he know about the baby? She was a good woman. She loved that man. It can't be bad when a woman loves a man like she did. Can it? No. No, if she loved him the way you say she did, she couldn't have been bad. And he, if, if he loved her the same way, did he love her? He was my husband. She loved him. She loved him very much. Hannah, did he love her? She was a good woman, Miss Lear. You believe that, don't you? Yes. Yes, I believe that. He tells me his Uncle Matt still lives here. Could you tell me where I might find him? Tell me where I can find Heath's uncle and aunt. What you want with Things, me? things you can't tell me. Leave them be. If they're here, I'll find them. They are to hotel. Thank you. Stay away from them, hear? Hannah, what are you afraid of? Leave me be. Leave this place. Let the dead rest in peace and the living to the time they got. Leave me be. Leave this place. Leave them be, miss. Leave them be. Actually, I don't suppose a low-cut dress would be quite the thing. Uh, did she have to say when she'd be back? She probably went shopping or visiting or something. She'll be back. Yeah, when she gets here, let us know. We'll be downstairs in the bar. Get rid of the dress. You uh, bought and paid for that, huh? Yes. there, uh, hoping that you'd come by. Yes, I wanted to see where Heath grew up and talk to people who knew him. It's our pleasure, Mrs. Barkley. Um, I have a pot of coffee, well, Perkins. Coffee would be very nice. It may not be as good it as... It will the... be fine, thank you. Uh, will you have a seat? Uh, take that chair there. I think you'll find that more comfortable. All right. Thank you. We heard that you'd taken Heath in. It's the right kind of you. Yes, sir. He's a very lucky boy, but... But then you're a fine woman, Mrs. Barkley, taking an orphan in like that. Not very many people that high-minded enough to accept that kind of moral obligation, but... I, I can understand it. Uh, I've got some biscuits. No, thank you. Yes, we, uh, Matt and I, I, we can understand how it is. We never thought to press you about this, Mrs. Barkley, but if you felt you owed Heath something, you know, you owe us something, too, for keeping him alive. Oh? 
You helped Heath and his mother financially? Yes, we kept both her and the boy you've taken into your home after your husband ran out on them. And now you'd like to be repaid for your sacrifice. Well, we leave that to you, ma'am. Don't you think we deserve that? How much? Well, you seem to be more than a fair-minded woman, Mrs. Barclay. Uh, why don't we just leave that up to you? Because it's, it's very difficult to put a value on what we did for them. Would $5,000 be enough? Well, I'm sure $5,000 would be more than enough. All right. But first, there are some questions I would like you to answer. That is, if you don't mind. No, no, of course we don't mind. Did you know Tom Barkley? I know him very well. He come courting my sister. We've seen him often, yes. Where did they meet? In a bar. Uh, my sister, Leah, worked in a bar. She was a waitress in this bar. I don't take that as anything else. I didn't even want her to work in that place. So they met in a bar. I suppose my husband dropped in for a drink. Uh, maybe so, yeah. And one thing led to another. Just what are you driving at, Mrs. Barclay? I would hope the truth, Mrs. Simmons. Oh, I... I see what you're getting at. You'd like to believe that Leah was cheap, right? I didn't even suggest... You'd like to make it out that she went with all sorts of men, that, that Leah was nothing more than a little entertainment as Martha, far as your I husband... I don't was... see any reason for it. No, that... that... that was the reason that you came here for, isn't it? Was the loving husband in love with another woman all the time he was with you? Well, if you want the truth, I'll tell it, Mrs. Barclay. I'm sure you will, Mrs. Simmons. You bet he loved her. And any fool who cared to look could see it. Loved her the way all of us would love to be loved and never are. And when she was carrying Heath, carrying his child, it became a special kind of love. If he loved her, if he knew about the child, why did he desert her? Your husband was a shrewd man, Mrs. Barclay. He wanted to become rich and powerful. And a man like that, no matter how much he loves, has to be ruthless. My no husband never heard of her. Ruthless. Ruthless and clever, the way all rich and powerful men must be. No, he had a wife and family. And he was, he was on his way to making that fortune when he left Strawberry. He wasn't about to take a millstone around his neck, a woman carrying his illegitimate child. You're about to write that check, Mrs. Barclay. My son, Jared, is a lawyer, and for years he's been lecturing me to think before I scrawled my name on the bottom of a check, and I... I think it's finally sunk in, so... Uh, you won't mind if I... think about this a bit, will you? Just had to cut her down, didn't she? She was already write that check, but you had to twist the knife in her gut and bleed her. She hasn't left yet. Yes, she will. She'll take the money with her. All right. All right. Maybe she thinks I lied about Leah. Maybe she thinks she does, but she doesn't know. She doesn't know, and if I know her, she's got to know. Now, we're going to have another chance with Victoria Barclay next time. No, Martha, no. We can't we let her go. Rachel's dead and nobody suspects a thing. We're gonna leave it that way. You can leave it that way, but I can't. No matter what the risk is, I've got to have my chance to escape from this, this cemetery. Matt, I'm, I'm still an attractive woman. There are men who could love me, but, but not this way, not with, not, not with the dust eating away at my clothes and... Matt, I, I had soft skin once. My hair... I've got to be a woman again! Now, if 
else. With you, I've got to have enough money to make a fresh start. And as long as Victoria Barclay is in town, I've still got a chance, Matt. Walk on over to the house. I meet you there. Right, she is staying. Put a carriage in the stable. May my heaven, Martha, what good is that? We can't keep her here. We can try, Matt. I told you I was getting out of here, with or without you. I'm sick and tired of being tied to a failure, stuck to a man who's too scared to even try. Now do as I say. Do as I say, or I'll find a man who will. Way, your husband's letter. It's just got to be. Hannah, Mr. and Mrs. Simmons told me that my husband met Heath's mother in a bar. Your husband? He never come looking for Miss Lear. She found him in an alley back of one of the saloons. He was beaten near half to death and robbed. Lucky he wasn't killed. There was lots of killings those days. She took him home, made him well. They also told me they took care of Leah and the baby. <laughs> that woman never cared for nobody but herself. And from the looks of it, she ain't doing too good a job of that. They've asked me for some money. You don't think they deserve it? I'll tell you what them two deserves. No. It don't make no difference now. Rachel's dead now. Ain't nothing ever going to bring her back. Hannah, did my husband love Leah? Everybody loved her, Miss Barclay. She was small and so pretty. And when she laughed, she had the nicest laugh. But most of all, ma'am, she was a good woman. She was a good woman. I'm sure of that. I'm sorry, Miss Parker. But I can't tell you what you ask. I don't know, did he love her or not? Maybe only the two of them know that. And Rachel, she know. But Rachel dead now. Maybe it's best you go, Miss. Not until you find that letter. It's gone now. It's gone, you hear? You go too before... Before what? <laughs> you stubborn, all right. Ain't nothing gonna turn you back, is there? Hannah, when I first spoke to you, you said you were afraid they might kill you too. Now, why would Mr. and Mrs. Simmons want to kill you? I didn't say they wanted to. You didn't say they killed Rachel, but you think they did. What happened to her? It's no use. It's gone. I'm not leaving here until you tell me what happened to Rachel. <laughs> I guess I knows that. When we hear Heath was living with you, them two, they want to ask you for money. They want to bother you. Rachel, she stopped them. She said Miss Leah would have wanted that way. A little while later, they find Rachel dead. She 
went and fell into a mine shaft. Law should have been called, but nobody cared enough. And me, I was, I was too scared lest they throws me in the bottom of the mine shaft, too. I can't read. Shows I don't know what's in here. But maybe this will answer some of your questions about your husband and Miss Liv. Thank you. Miss Barclay, you want to thank me good and proper? You read what's in here, and you get yourself out of this place. If the answer to your question ain't in this letter, then there ain't no answer for you. Not in this world. Anyway. Thank you. It's not like Mother to just leave without saying a word and not tell us where she's going. It's all my fault. I was so busy admiring myself and trying on my new wardrobe. Oh, no, don't be silly. Did she say anything to you before she left? She said she might visit a few of her friends and... And not to worry. But I was so busy looking at myself, I didn't think to ask her what friends. I don't think she wanted us to know where she was going. Mrs. Barclay, I trust Hannah told you everything you wanted to know. Yes, everything. Then if you'll write that check, you can be on your way. I'm afraid you'll have to be a little patient. There are several details that must be ironed out. What did the half-mad old woman tell you? Oh, she's not quite sure you helped out as much as you claim. Oh? All right. You offered us $5,000, Mrs. Barclay. We'll settle for half. Well, that's a very fair offer. I'd accept it if I were you. I'm sorry, but I'll have to think it over. What did she tell you? Some crazy story about how Rachel went and got herself... Shut up, man. Shut said. up! It's an accident. Rachel died in an accident. I'm sure it was. Mrs. Barclay, I must understand we were just taking her for an outing. As she wandered away from us, fell through some rotted boards into an abandoned mine shaft. That's the way it happened. Well, we'll just have to take you to where it happened, and we'll just have to show you how it happened. Oh, it's bad enough leaving here without repaying us for what we did for Heath and his mother, but leaving here thinking we're murderers. Why, Mrs. Barclay, we can't have that. I don't know what you have in mind, but I have four sons. They'll come looking for oh, me, I'm sure and they they'll will. find me. Matt, help the lady. Oh! Oh, and Heath! Heath! What's wrong? Nothing, nothing. Nice seeing you again, Uncle Matt. Hey, Martha. Where's the carriage? In the stable. Let's go. Matt. 
mad. They've got to be stopped. You always said nobody could prove anything, so I guess there's nothing to worry about, is there, Martha? To be heading through Shadow Mountain. Good place to arrange another accident. I'm not going to stay here and wait. And you better get out. I've had my fill of killing. I'll tell you something else, Martha. Whatever you had in mind for Mrs. Barclay, I think I would have stopped you. Why, you poor, miserable soul. You nothing. You're not a man. You're not even half a man. You're nothing. You're a weak, groveling nothing. Half a man. Half a man. When you were born, you were nothing. And when you die, you're not a man. Nothing. Phelps. This was from the beginning. Just like this. What is it you want me to do, Mom? Kill them. <laughs> oh, I knew there was a catch. They can hurt me. And you think that's reason enough for me to... Mm. Us. Us, they can hurt us. Well, that's a little better. You see? All my practicing with the rifle's gonna come in handy. No, I couldn't take that chance. You might have killed them. No, no, we'll tell Jared, and if there's a way, the law will be back for them. There was something else, Heath. A letter. It told me everything. I want you to know, too. May I read part of it to you? You're a wonderful woman, Leah. Perhaps the only woman in the world I could have loved as much as I love my wife. And someday, very soon, I hope you'll meet someone. You'll fall in love as you deserve, and he will love you as you deserve to be loved. And you'll be as happy as I am, as proud as I am of my family. You must marry Leah. You must have children. You were meant for that. And he didn't know. No. No, he didn't know about you.
sorry we couldn't get back in time for the ceremony. It doesn't matter. It's a fine-looking statue. Yes. Ma! Father, we've been looking all over for you. Where have you Mother! Been? Hey, you're wearing them. Father's boots. Come on, we're gonna get some of that champagne. Oh, <laughs> Anything. I don't think. I wouldn't blame you if you did. All I wanted really was to get a closer look at that black stallion. Oh, he was beautiful. I uh, didn't mean to get that close. I did. I was trying to catch him. Oh, I'm sorry. No hurry. Tomorrow's another day. I'll get him. For yourself? For sale. After I break him. Is that your work? Right now it is. We better get after the horses. You should get out of those wet clothes as soon as you can. That's exactly what I was thinking. I'd risk my own neck for a gal as fetching as that one. You got a one-track mind, Turk. Maybe, but if I'm gonna be tromped on by horses, there better be some more pay in it than just a thank you. We're new in this valley. We can use a good reputation. You mean that's the reason you say that, gal? For a good reputation? It's getting late. Let's forget the horses and get back to the others. We'll hit that farm as soon as it's dark. <laughs> Your hair, it's all wet. Where have you been? Riding. Through the swamp? Alongside the stream in McCollamy. Well, you surely you didn't fall in. As it happens, I was, well, pushed in by a young man. Who? I guess it was probably the most thrilling experience of my whole life. It uh, wasn't Amos Carver's son, Tad, was it? Sounds like the kind of trick he'd pull. <laughs> I don't think it's anyone you know yet. Oh? 
Oh, try me. Uh, many people in this valley I don't know, you know. Now, uh, let's see. Was it, uh, Chet Beamish? Why must you assume it has to be someone you know? Uh, Audra, if you were dunked, we are merely trying to find out who did the dunking. He didn't dunk me. He saved my life. Saved your life? From a herd of wild horses. Well, why in blazes didn't you say so? Because you didn't give me a chance. As usual, you were all more interested in finding out whether your little sister, who happens to be well able to take care of herself, was pushed into the water by the right kind of man. Your kind, not necessarily mine. All right, all right. Audra, we're very sorry. Uh, but who was he? Whoever he was, I'm very grateful to him. I'd like to meet him and tell him so. I forgot to ask his name. <laughs> Floyd, I think. But I'd know him in a minute. I mean, you just can't forget what he looks like. I don't know, just there's something so different about him. How do you happen to be up there on the McCollamy? He catches wild horses, sells them when they're broken. You seem to know quite a lot about him. I'd like to know more. What happened to anyone else, Harry? Two, three of my friends. Graf, Bauer, Jamie Drum. I don't know of anyone else. How did they answer? Like the note said, I guess. What choice have we got, Nick? You either pay or you see a lifetime of sweat go up in smoke. And that's still your choice? I don't know, Victoria. I paid them all I've got. When you hear that pack of hounds coming, your blood turns to water. And you pray for God's wrath to strike him dead. I'd say you better start shooting first, pray later. They'd wipe me out. And Margaret, the kids. Yeah, this won't solve any problems, but it might settle that stomach of yours. You're all saying the same as Nick. Shoot it out with them. It may not come to that if they know you have help. My boys, some of our hands, the sheriff. Jamie Drum went to the sheriff last week. They got wind of it. Burned his barley field and fouled his well. The sheriff ain't even a notion who they could be. Nor you. All I ever seen was notes like this. Not even a guess. You're welcome to this if you feel you have to pay. They'd burn me out if I didn't. Oh, I know they did damage enough to frighten you. But I believe men like that back away when they see you're determined not to yield. Now, you were free the first time, but once you paid... Well, here's the money. I don't believe I'll be needing that, Victoria. Harry, first thing tomorrow, we'll find that pack and drive them right into the river. I'll be waiting for you. I guess all I ever really needed was to open up to folks who don't scare. Thank you. Good night.
mister. How'd they treat you, those folks at the big house? Were they understanding? How much they give you? Nothing. You get no more from me. Is that what those Barclays told you to say? Maybe you forgot to tell them how we've been protecting you. By sucking their life out of me. Like you've done to the others. You pay only for protection. You're not being very sensible accusing us of anything else. I'll accuse you, all right. You're all a bunch of thieving hoodlums! Scum! I'm gonna prove it. I, I know you. I've seen you in town. Tomorrow morning, I'm gonna go... Something stronger tonight than coffee, Lloyd. You nervous, Turk? Because I'm not. Wasn't what you planned, killing that farmer, was it? Anyone else worrying about what happened tonight? Ain't worried, Lloyd. They're gonna be looking for his killer. They won't look here unless we give him cause. We're following our respectable traders' mustangers for a couple of days. We'll be busy breaking them for shipping to the cavalry after that. What about them other farmers, Lloyd? You gonna forget about them? I'm forgetting nothing, Turk. I'm gonna make sure they don't forget us. Or talk back like Coleman did this evening. Those words are put in his mouth about the Barclays. Since so as soon as we're ready, we're going after them. Might be shooting a little high, Lloyd. We own half this valley. And if we get him, we'll own the other half. Farmers around here don't think for themselves. They turn to the Barclays the way Coleman did. There's nothing can stop us once we get the Barclays. Big plan like that's just what I've been waiting to hear, Lloyd. We're starting out early after those ponies. Let's get some sleep. Lloyd? Boys are all with you, Lloyd. They'd better be. They know where they'd be without me. Where are we going when we leave here, Lloyd? Don't tell me you're homesick. Ain't you? For what? There's nothing left in the South for any of us, Fancy. Don't you ever think about it? Your home? Your family? I only think about tomorrow, not yesterday. I'll find what I'm looking for right here. It'll be big. It's gotta be big or I might as well be dead leaving our dead in the hands of the all-loving Father. We pray for his strength to endure and his guidance on the way. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and bring you peace. Amen. Margaret. Don't touch me. You just leave us alone. Hugh Barclays there to blame that he's dead. He'd come to you for help. Instead, you told him to stand up to them. Like a fool, he listened to you. All the help he got from you was a bullet. And you killed him just as sure as if you'd shot him down yourselves. Come, Chuck. Let's go home.
no right to say that. All we did is tell him how we felt about it. And besides, you offered him the money. Would that change the fact that we influenced him not to accept it? I don't think we can blame ourselves. What else could we have done? I don't know, but what we did was too easy. We weren't in Harry's shoes. We didn't have to face what he faced or live with his fear. I thought I understood how he felt. I didn't. All right, if we went too far, then there's only one thing to do now. Go further. Now, I don't know how much Harry knew about that gang, but it's certain the others he mentioned must know a little. If they'll talk after this. They've got to talk. Asking men to risk their lives and without any more law to protect them than Harry had? No, no, I don't think you can expect that of them, Nick. I do, because I expect it of myself. And I'd say the same thing to Harry right now if he were alive. They might talk if every farmer in the valley agreed to stand with them. But that would take time. And they're bound to be holdouts too frightened to join in. No. No, I think one man might be enough. One man? How? If he had the courage to refuse to pay and knew that we were with him, he might act as a decoy and bring him out in the open. Sweet as honeysuckle, Graf. What are you getting for tokays now? Price don't change much. 45 cents a crate, about. Less what you pay those jackals for letting them ripen, huh? Graf, how long are you gonna stand still and let that gang of killers squeeze you dry? And they will, you know, just like that. Nick, I got a little place. I work hard. Graf, we could trap that gang if someone were willing to go along as a decoy, and you wouldn't be alone. We'd be there waiting for them when they came. It ain't that I'm scared, Nick. But I gotta think of Lottie. I don't wanna have her left a widow like Margaret Coleman. You can't say for sure she won't. No, I can't. I wish I could. You're asking too much of me would be willing enough I'd be to do it if I was a single man. But none of us is that. It's a big valley, this. And there's nights with not a body for miles around. Well, there won't be any more nights like that, Jamie. We'll have all the guns we need. Aye, but they're shrewd. Never a sight of them do you see when you expect to. Jamie, have you ever seen any of them face to face? Never. Just the masked and hooded men coming at night, asking pay to protect me. A man must be prepared to die if he's to be their decoy. And I'm not brave enough for it. We'd do it in your place if we could, Jamie. Aye, but when they go after a Barclay, in their evil way, because their dirty hands are in my pocket, they let me live. I'm just mortified, sir, but my dance program's filled to the very last waltz. Some other time. Uh, <laughs> Woo! Oh, Dee Claire, I'm just about the most sought after belle of the governor's ball. Buy it for me, Lord, honey. How much? Well, that was kind of high. $14. Ain't too high for someone you love. Put it on the bill. <laughs> Looks like you recovered. Oh, yes. No ill effects at all. Did you? I never felt better. I was going to look for you. My mother would like very much to thank you. I'm not much of a hand at being thanked. I think she'd understand that. I reckon she would if she's at all like you. Order's all ready for you, Miss Audra. Got the buggy outside? No, just my horse. Might be a little too much for just the one horse. 
But not for two. Where do you live? Oh, it's not for me. It's for the Coleman's. Hmm. That's the man that was shot the other night. I'm just taking a few things over for his family. That's uh, very thoughtful of you. Oi, right. I guess we forgot to introduce each other. I'm Lloyd Garner. I'm Audra Barkley. some things I thought you might need. Your family's conscience bothering them, Audra. Gifts won't heal it. You just take what you brought and get off this place. And don't any of you Barclays ever come back here again. She didn't mean it. She does. And she has every right. My family told her husband to stand up to those men who shot him. Time, that's all. I'd still like you to meet my mother. Would you have supper with us? All right. Tomorrow night? It'd be a pleasure. Do you know where we live? It's the first thing you learn when you come into this valley. Come in, please. Lloyd. Dinner's going to be late. I, I hope you don't mind. The family's busy with a visitor. Whiskey? Brandy? No. I don't drink much, thank you. Cider, how's that? Just fine. Why don't you sit over here? It's my father's favorite chair. catch wild horses, but where's your family? You really do want to know about me? Everything. Well, for one thing, I have no family, nor a home since I was 10. The kind I did have died. I was killed when the South was overrun, and the Union Army marched to the sea. I'm sorry. That was a long time ago. How did you live? Same way as the soldiers. Off the country. Foraging. Sleeping in fields, caves. Running. Always running. 
Just anywhere. To get away. To hide. There was a few of us stuck together. Safety in numbers, we thought. We kept moving. Always moving westward. Have you stopped running? Perhaps. Guess I could settle in a place like this. It reminds me of home. Where do you live now? We have a camp. Not that way. Beside the Calaveras. It's good grazing for the horses. Till they're ready for I'm sale. Glad you changed your mind, Jamie. You're a very brave man. It's not so brave I am as practical, but I must keep myself respected. You won't be alone, Jamie. We promise you that. Thank you. I've kept you from your supper. Won't you join us? Thank you, but I'll eat at my own hearth and enjoy it for the first time in many a day. Good night. Good night, Jamie. Good night. Good night. We're late. Do forgive us. Audra's made it. Time fly, Mrs. Barkley. This is Lloyd Gardner, Mother. I'm glad to meet you. And you must know how very grateful I am to you. Audra told you me how Don't embarrass you... him, Mother. Well, a mother's gratitude, thank you. This is my brother, Jared Lloyd. How do you do? And Nick and he. Hello? Eddie. Oh, I uh, hear you have a way with horses. I think so. May I offer you a drink? No, thank you. Well, now, Mr. Gardner, where are you from? Georgia. Georgia? Well, you're a long way from home. Oh, home's been most any part of the country with me for quite some time now. Tennessee. Kansas, New Mexico. New Mexico? Have you ever been to Santa Fe? Yes. Well, I have a very good friend there. His name is Miguel Escobar, raises cattle. You don't by some chance know him. Please stop interrogating him, Jared. <laughs> well, I certainly hope it didn't seem like an interrogation to you. Not at all. Come on. You must be starved. <laughs> That all you can say, that it isn't what you tell that Barkley gal. That's enough, Francie. Hey, Lloyd. What are you on? We're riding out to the flats tomorrow to pick up the money from that farmer. You go on with us? You can forget it. I saw him. He was at the Barkleys. And they're setting a trap. We go up there. Every farm, every deputy in the valley be waiting for us. Does that include the Barkleys? They won't stay away from a chance like that. Well, then maybe this is our chance to hit them while they're gone. You was after information up there, Lloyd. <sighs> Looks like you got it. Nothing can stop us once we got the Barclays. Ain't that what you said? No. No, it's too soon. Well, maybe we can do it ourselves. If it's that Barclay gal that's bothering you. She's got nothing to do with it. The only thing that girl means to me is information. The more she talks about a place, about her brothers, the easier it is for me to know exactly how to handle them. And I say we wait. Saddle on him, but he'll need careful handling for a few more days. Of course, he's gonna cost you. How much? A couple of hours in town tonight, having supper with me at the hotel. Tonight? I don't know. It's, it's very short notice. There's a pleasure in doing things on impulse. Oh, I love being impulsive, but. Are you afraid of me, Audra? How could I be? You saved my life. I, there's a special reason why I want you to have supper with me. What is it? Well, it's kind of a celebration for us. For us? If it hadn't been for him, we'd never have met. Well, bye, bye. All right, Lloyd. Well, where'd he come from? He's mine, a gift from Lloyd. That's a fine-looking animal. Saddle broke? 
close enough for order to handle the rest. Uh-huh, we'll see. I'll call for you at six. You, uh, going someplace with him tonight, are you? Mm-hmm. To town for supper. Sure does work fast, don't he? Didn't have to say that. No, but it is true. And you think so, too, I suppose. Well, I don't know about that, but he sure doesn't stint on the size of his come on, now does he? You're impossible, both of you. Keith, brown up the men, I'll get Jared. Oh, and uh, make sure they have supper. I got a feeling it's gonna be a very long night. as good company as you don't. Oh, don't ever think that, Archer. It couldn't have been nicer. You're wonderful. So quickly, there was nothing we could do about it. Was anyone hurt? We lost three horses. Four. How did it happen? We found this on the porch. They want $2,000 the next time it'll be the house. And I'll tell you what they're gonna get, nothing. They're going as far as they're gonna go. Would you excuse me, Lloyd? I think I ought to be with my family now. Sure. May I call on you tomorrow? All right. <laughs> That's first thing in the morning. When he checked out, he's pretty badly singed. Nick, what? Could be I'm not making sense. Maybe not even worth mentioning. What? Garner? Well, what about it? When was the last time we saw him? This morning, when he when he brought that stallion. Yeah, and the time before that was when he was here for supper. What are you getting at, Heath? Both times he was here, so was Jamie Drum. Now, he could have overheard us talking in the hall. So was Silas in the hall. Nick, who else but our own could have known where we'd be this evening? Except Garner. Well, he, he was he was with Audra. Well, the rest of his pack of coyotes weren't, if they are his. Uh, that's mighty little to go on. It's more than we had till now. Audra, we saved that stallion Garner gave you. I'll tell him when he comes by tomorrow. Aren't you moving pretty fast? Why don't you slow down, little sister? You hardly know him. But I do. Yeah, what has it been, a week? That's long enough. Or am I still too young to see him again without getting your permission? Look, we've had a little bit too much on our minds to be pestered with callers. Now, we're all overwrought. Audra, come on, we'll get a good night's sleep. Nick? What was that all about? I don't know, I don't know, Jared. He's got some wild idea that Garner is mixed up in all of this. You got anything to go on? I do. Not enough. Let's hear it. Oh, hey, Lottie boy. 
countryside for miles around. I bet we got every little old sodbuster in this valley just a shaking in his shoes tonight. But not the Barclays. Mm. Yeah, we'll know about that tomorrow. I know now. Funny thing about you, Lloyd. Being so sure you could get the Barclays. Looks like the only thing you can be sure of now is you can't. Well, me and the boys have nothing different. Since when have you or anyone else started to do the thinking for this outfit, Turk? Ever since you've been getting the information while we've been taking the risk. Well, you just remember this. I taught you how to stay alive. Without me, you'd be starving in some southern swamp, sniveling about what those Yankees did to you. Don't try doing the thinking again for this outfit, Turk. <laughs> Turk, you think them Barclays will pay tomorrow? If they don't, we'll burn their house. Would you tell Miss Audra Lloyd Garner's here? Oh, yes. Won't you come in? This way, please. Mr. Garner, may I get you a drink? No, thank you. Mm. You're here to see my sister. Yes. And her brothers aren't tactful enough to get out of the way. <laughs> well, she should be down directly. Why don't you come on over here and sit down, Mr. Garner? Right over there. Say, by the way, I imagine you'll be happy to hear we managed to save that fine stallion you gave Audra. I'm glad, for her sake. Must be worth quite a bit of money. Would have been, I guess, if I'd put him up for sale. You know, I don't like to offend you, but it kind of makes me uncomfortable to see a young man giving gifts he can't really afford. What makes you think I can't afford it? Well, we hear you've got quite a little family down by the river. Keeping them fed must cost quite a bit. We live a pretty frugal life. We've been living that way for a long time now. And we're not complaining. Well, now, that is a rare virtue, especially for around these parts. Isn't it? Hmm. Well, I'll go see what's keeping Audra. Well, what about it? He's got the right speech. It could be him. And that horse out there looks like the same sorrel. All right, Jamie. You won't be seeing Audra today, Garner. Something wrong? Whatever's wrong is not with Audra or this family, but with the Valley. And it's been wrong ever since you and your gang of Mustangers got here. Is that a coincidence, Garner? Or would you happen to know why? Do the Barclays always suspect a stranger when something happens? Only when there's good reason. Now, according to this telegram, the same thing that's been happening to the people in this valley happened in Santa Fe this winter. That's where you were last. Or is that a coincidence, too? It's not proof of anything else. Looks like questioning any man who's friendly with your sister is one of your favorite pastimes. Excuse me. Tell me something, Garner. Whose money paid for Audra's supper at the hotel last night? Was it the money you got from Mr. Graff? I'm not answering any more questions. Now, if you'll get out of my way. Couldn't have been Harry Coleman's. He turned you down. How about Hank Bauer? I know he's been paying. You're wasting your time if you think you can trick an admission out of me. I don't know those men. You're a liar. A liar, Garner. A cold-blooded liar. You put the squeeze on Coleman just like you did the rest of them, and then when he stood up to you, you shot him down. Isn't that the truth, Garner? Admit it! Isn't that the truth? Admit it or I'll beat it out of you! Get up! Get up! 
That's enough, Nick. All right. You're gonna tell me the name of every farmer you put your filthy hands on. Nick! Now tell me, Garner. What are you tell doing? Me, Let Garner, him go! Let him go! You're gonna, gonna tell me. Why? You better tell the sheriff. What are you doing? Tell her why? why? Tell her why? Let her tell you. She knows me better than you ever will. Let him go! It's all right. He won't get far. Audra. Audra, he, he's a cold-blooded killer. He killed his own father for a dollar. He killed Coleman. Audra. Saddled up. Then we'll head north across the line to the Klamath. We'll meet at the falls. That's a far piece, Lloyd. Don't I... argue. Just do as you're told. And you're giving up on the Barclays, is that it? And all that talk about owning half the valley after we got them? Wasn't nothing but talk. I misjudged them. They won't pay. You don't know that for sure. All we did was burn one barn. They'll change their tune after we burn the house. I told you we're moving out. Moving out's what he says. What he means is we're running. Hold it, hold it. Someone's coming. What are you doing here? I couldn't believe what they said without asking you. You shouldn't have come. Boy, you said I know you better than they ever would. Do I, Lloyd? Do I? Sure. You know me better than they do. Better than anyone. But it's no use, Audra. It just won't work. I think I should know the reason. Forget it. Just mount up and go home, that's all. Why, Lloyd? Why? I said that's all. Stupid letting her go, Lloyd. Well, Barclay's pay now. Put the money in a saddlebag and leave it at Oak Flats before noon tomorrow. Do not tell the sheriff or anyone else if you want her back alive. I should have killed her. Seems we have no choice now. We have a choice. The same one Harry Coleman had. I know now how he felt and how much courage it took for him not to give in. There must be something, something we can do. What time is it? Two o'clock. Quick with the answers. Smart Alec answers shooting off my mouth of what I'd expect for myself if anything like this ever happened to us. Big, brave Nick Barkley. Big mouth, oh, Nick oh, Barkley. Nick, don't. Don't! Don't what? Don't admit we're human beings because we are, and that's a fact. We're as human as anyone else. And when we're pinned to that wall, we pay. We have until noon tomorrow to do that, Nick. Jared, we can't take the risk of... I know the risk, Keith.
outfit's just been promoted to number one. Permanent. <laughs> Got it. And without no information. Hundred. See that? Hundred. Twenties. Look here. Got it. Got it. Huh? Right, I don't. In fact, she'd be kind of a nuisance all around, her knowing who we are and all. Let her go, Turk. We can be out of the state before they even know we're gone. Get out. I said, get out! <laughs> Answer him. Where are they? Just waiting in camp. Have your money, Jubal. I followed you too far not to. And you'll have to kill me first. Then I'll kill what I started. Dead. Your arm's cut. You're going to have it took care of. Tomorrow will be time enough. By noon tomorrow, we'll be at Big Valley. At Oak Meadows. Yes, sir. Oak Meadows. On the edge of the Barclay land. Just waiting for us. Like I told you it would be. Mr. Chairman, in anticipation of the importance of this meeting and what we hope to accomplish this day, I've had my assistants prepare a complete 
and documented presentation for your examination and evaluation. Now, this first document contains the total amount of the Valley's production for the last two years. Rather an impressive undertaking. Thank you. Now, these are the latest census figures, which break down to show the total amount of the Valley's contribution to the state's consumption of food, timber, leather goods. Mr. Chairman, may I ask that you direct Mr. Barkley to get to his point? He's trying to do just that, but you keep interrupting. You're out of order, young man. Mr. Chairman, unfortunately, my brother is unfamiliar. Go on with the issue, Mr. Barkley. Now, these are the projected figures of the Valley's potential production, if a dam were to be constructed in the area that we have suggested. A dam, gentlemen, could mean the influx of new businesses that would affect the entire economy of this West Coast. Gentlemen, the potential that lies there in that valley is limitless. It would seem young Mr. Barkley has inherited some of his father's political ambitions. I was not aware that the state's general well-being was a political issue. Or could it be that it's the finance committeeman's instructions to make it one? It is political to this point, Mr. Chairman. My party made a promise to the people at the last election, a promise to watch very closely state expenditures. We intend to keep that promise. The majority party's desire to honor a campaign commitment is most commendable. However, if I can point out a way that that promise can be kept and at the same time the dam can be constructed, would the chairman consider keeping this hearing open for a time longer? Six seconds. You're almost as good. What do you mean, almost? Nick would have beaten you by a good three seconds. Oh, you think so, huh? Yes, I do. Sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm <laughs> sure. Oh, oh. Morning. Howdy. I can see I'm on Barkley range. You both have Tom Barkley's mark. Where's the old river cypher at? My father's dead. Tom's dead? Six years ago. Who are you? Who'd you say you were? Ma, she ain't dead, too. She's at the house. My God, Tom's dead. I'm Chad. He's Jubal Tanner, my gramps. And we come a long way. Yeah, where from? Camino, Calaveras, and a few other dozen gold camps thrown in between. Gramps got cut. His arm needs looking to. All this fuss over a little scratch. Juba? Victoria. Wonderful to see you. Oh. The years have been good to you, as it was meant to be. Well, we thought about you so much. I'm sorry about Tom. He would love to have seen you. And this is? My son Richard's boy. Richard? Is he with you? No. He and Chad's ma died of the fever when Chad was a baby. Chad. I think Chad could do with some hot food. Am I right? Gramps? You're with the closest thing to a family you got, boy. You're hungry, say so. I'm hungry. Well, you get a bath first. Come on. You'll find some clothes for him in the trunk in the spare room. Mr. Tanner's arm needs to be bandaged. Oh, what happened? Uh, nothing. I got in a little scrape. Let me fix it. 30 years. <laughs> Where has it all gone to? Ah, some of it into this ranch. This house. Those two fine young ones of yours. There are two more. What about you? Chad's all. I never married again. Besides Margaret, there was only one other worth marrying. My best friend had done that. Why didn't you keep in touch? I did in a way. I heard of some of your doings. Tom's success here. 
Who'd have thought? When the four of us come through here 30 odd years ago, who'd have thought that one day it would all be his? Tom did, remember? Yeah, he did that. And he said there would always be one particular piece of land for you. The piece of land he knew you would want. That's right. He put it in writing. Got it in these here letters. Why didn't you just come and take it? Uh, that's why I'm here now. Or well, not to take it. I mean to buy it. Oh, Jubal, that land is yours. No. Everything I got, I earned. I wouldn't be happy with it otherwise. I wrote to Tom, and I asked him to set a fair price. At first, he wouldn't. But finally, he agreed on, a, on an honest sum. There's the price, 6000 I added 1000 to it, because I knew the land would be worth more. And that's where my 30 years went. Jubal, please. No. This land's got to be bought and paid for. You paid for the land a long time ago. No. Now I pay for it. That's the way I want it. Now Oak Meadows is mine. Oak Meadows has always been yours. Oak Meadows! That's what Jared said. We would make Oak Meadows available for the dam site. Now it's as good, if not better, than any place that's been suggested up till now. How did he swing it? By offering the land at 50 cents an acre a quarter of its value, and by showing them all they have to do is fill that narrow gorge at the south end of Oak Meadows, and we've got a dam! Yay! Hey, Nick, when are they gonna do it? Well, a special committee is going over coldest construction plans right now, and we should get the good word any day. <laughs> sense in that at all. Nick, please lower your voice. I've heard the people talk of a dam in this valley since I was a kid. It will just have to go somewhere else. It'll be Oak Meadows or not at all for a Oak long time. Oak Meadows belongs to Jubal Tanner, and I doubt very much if he will sell. We'll see to your Jubal Tanner. Nicholas, I forbid you. I don't want you or anyone else putting pressure on Jubal to sell. Oh, Mother, you won't get any pressure from me. I'll not do any of the pressing, I promise you that. But when the people in this valley hear that they've lost their dam, your friend Jubal Tanner will learn the real meaning of the word pressure. as if it's been a night lonely. I'm right sorry. Never figured it'd take me 30 years to... It's all land now. The richest boy with me. Fine young man. His ma's kin tried to take him when she and Richard passed. Slight chance. We're gonna build a cabin up yonder ways. But I'll come see you every day. It's a promise. Mm -hmm. 
and miss you, Meg. After 30 years, I miss you as much as the day I put you in there. A hollowness came over me that I never did feel. Sorry it's grown over. Tom used to keep it up. Dubal, this is the first time since... Well, it's the first time I've been back to this part of Oak Meadows. All these years. Well, you'll come by more often now. I mean, we'll be dividing the visit between here and, and your place. Oh, Dubal. Exactly the news the whole valley is hoping to hear. It's thrown back in your teeth, and you stand there as calm as a mule chewing on summer grass. What would you like me to do? You have worked harder to get that dam put in than anybody else. That's true. And then get fired up. Show me something, anything. Just show me you're alive, will you? Aren't you fired up enough for both of us? She's like talking to a stone wall. And what do you propose? Busting through that stone wall? Oh, come on now, Jared. I've known you to ram your head once or twice. And sometimes it's better to go around. You just try going around the people in this valley when they hear they've lost their dam. Nick, now I'm sure when Mother and Mr. Tanner are presented with the facts in an unemotional way, the plans for the dam will go ahead. They won't if Oak Meadows is the only answer. How was your trip? The trip was quiet. Things changed a little when I got here. How about some sherry? Thank you. I meant what I just said. Well, now, I'm sure there's more than one answer if we look for it. Either kick him out or get him another piece of land. We'll do neither one. Jubal Tanner is a very old and a very dear friend. And you have some very old and very dear friends here, too, Mother. Now, Mother, I'm sure whatever reason you have, it's a good one. But you have to consider the fact it'll be affecting hundreds of others. Your father promised Jubal that land long before any of you were born. And I'd be the first to do what father wanted. But wouldn't he have wanted the dam too? So do I. But we don't own the land. The deed hasn't been signed yet. Since when does a Barclay need his signature to make his word good? Some broken down old nobody drifts in here looking for something. Easy now. I drifted in here six months ago looking for something. That was different. Was it? I was looking for what I believed was mine, a place to set some roots down. And that old man, he's looking for the same thing. I just can't see how I can argue against it. Couldn't we at least offer him another section of land? Your father and I helped him bury his wife at Oak Meadows. What other section would you suggest? sat here and we'll look the whole thing over. And over there, we'll have a fireplace big enough to burn a half a tree. Gosh, Gramps. Sure sounds good. When are we going to build it? Oh, I figure sometime this week when we get enough lumber up here from town. A real house with more than one room. That's what we'll have. And glass in the windows? And wood on the floor. And doors that close instead of a hanging blanket. And ticking to sleep on instead of a lot of flea bitten old fur. Yeah. And plenty of water to bathe in. Yeah. And we'll have. You're set up here for quite a time. 
Well, it's long enough. Well, this is a squatter country, old time. I'm afraid you're going to have to clear out. Well, oh, hold on. I'm speaking for the owners. This is my land, bought and paid for. Well, I don't know who sold it to you, but I guarantee you've been taken. Well, I got no idea what that means, and I ain't sure I care. It means this whole area is going to be flooded soon. It means there's going to be a dam built up here. Gramps! Don't you fret, boy. Ownership. Mr. One of Us is in for a powerful surprise. Jared, I was just on my way over to see you and I noticed this campsite here. What's he been saying? Some nonsense about a dam. Don't worry about a thing. I ain't worried. Jared, what is this? That's my oldest son, Jared. Jared, do you know what this old man just told me? I know all about it, Len. And? He purchased Oak Meadows from my mother yesterday. Well, then you buy it back. Jared, it's official. The committee approved the plans. I've got the go-ahead to start construction. I'd appreciate being let in on what this talk of a dam means. Well, I'll tell you one thing, old-timer. It means trouble if this isn't straightened out. Now, that's no threat. It's just a statement of fact. You see, there are a lot of people with a stake in this. A lot of people who gave their nickels and dimes and dollars to pay for the lobbying done in Sacramento. Jared, you're the one who wanted all this. You're the one who's handled the whole thing so far. Now, what are you going to do? There'll be work for I don't know how many in building it. Then there'll be new farmland and more people to work that land. And it'll mean new trade for the store owners in Stockton and new businesses in the valley. It all adds up to a lot of people, Jubal, and a lot of opportunities I believe they have a right to. Jared, I'm 68. And the better part of my life on this earth, I worked for one thing. One thing, mind you. Long time ago, I took a frail, pretty little girl from a safe place, and I brought her out here. I promised her a home of her own. When she died, I promised her something else. I promised her the land she was buried in. Yesterday, I kept that promise. Now, that might mean nothing to some. All them years, I promised to a dead person. Fair enough. You was talking about rights, the rights of all them people. I figured each by themselves are only one, just like I'm only one. And I got rights, and I own this land, and by gar, I'm going to keep it. Well, I guess that's about as simple as it can be put. He wouldn't budge. And there it's going to sit, and you're going to do nothing about it? No, I'm still going to try everything I know to get him to change his mind. Well, you better succeed, because this whole valley isn't going to lose out on account of one stubborn old man. You know that. Jared, that, uh, that stubborn old man was once a very young, very determined young man who was very much in love. Believe me, he is not going to change his mind. You could help me. No. No, I couldn't.
Well, looks like the hen party broke up early. Still going on, for all I know. Oh? You should have heard what Flora Benson had to say about Oak Meadows. Flora Benson? The Benson Timber family. Her company would supply all the lumber if the dam were built. Flora, is she the one with the reddish hair, let alone the plump side? Yes. <laughs> She's been giving you a hard time. You should hear some of the things she said about Mother. Oh, hon, just consider the source. I did more than that. I told her off. As only you can. Heath. Are you as confused as I am? Whether to side with Mother and Tanner or Jared and Nick and the rest of the valley. There's a lot of good argument to both sides. Well, then you haven't decided either. I have. Then will you help me decide? My feelings are based on a lot of things that have only to do with me. Father, whatever you decide, it's not going to affect a trial. What trial? The trial of the whole Barkley family. The verdict will be in sometime later today. What does that mean? It means that Jared is planning to sign over the deed to Jubal Tanner later this afternoon. And I'm going to go on over there and try to talk some sense into him before it's too late. You want to come along? Yeah, I'd kind of like to see how the trial comes out. Little sister, I'm sorry I can't help you decide. But whichever road you choose to travel, don't you think you could get there on your own? Before I sign that deed, Jubal, I'd like to point something out to you. The Barclays have kind of led things in the valley ever since Father stood up against the railroad people. Now we find ourselves in the position of standing in the way of progress. They killed your daddy, those hired guns of the railroad. That's right. Because he stood for something that he believed was right. It didn't matter that he was standing against the railroads who was bringing in progress. Jubal, the railroads were trying to take over ranch lands that had been worked for years. Oak Meadows hasn't been worked for years, but it's been worked for for years. You should have been a lawyer, Jubal. Son, it's just that a big old oak tree don't look the same to a ground squirrel as it does to a hoot owl. That's a fine analogy. Which one am I? Nothing personal. The people will never stop trying to get you out. I don't reckon they will. The majority usually rules. That's too bad. Because being the majority don't make it right. Jared, don't do it. You can't turn against the people in this valley. I'm not turning against anyone. That's exactly what you're doing if you sign that deed. When I sign this deed, I'll be honoring an agreement made by Mother. Oh, now, don't throw it all up to Mother. Nick. Now, why don't you and Heath go buy yourself a beer? I don't hey, want a beer. Here. He's been sitting in one place too long. No, now, listen to me. Buy him a sarsaparilla. Listen, Jared, I got just as much to say about this as anybody else. Nick, do you think this is easy for me? Do you think I like seeing all that work go for nothing? It's just that I'm trying to be a hoot owl and a ground squirrel at the same time. And I guarantee you it's not easy. I guess that's supposed to mean something. All of a sudden, I've got a thirst. Well, I haven't. What do you say, boy, a big sarsaparilla? Yes, sir. If father were alive, I know what he'd say. And do. in a mining camp, he knows what a saloon looks like. I've got more than a few growlers for the miners. Penny a bucket. Well, you know, I used to make money the same way when I was a kid. Yeah. Did you ever lick the foam off the top of a can? Just once. Graham smelled it in my breath. Never tasted it since. Did you ever sneak rides on the cars down into the deep mines? Didn't Angel's camp. How are you two cut up old times? I'll get myself a beer. And a big sarsaparilla. And a big sarsaparilla. Two beers and a large sarsaparilla. You minding the kid while the old man gets Oak Meadows deeded over? 
Pulling your fangs, Dutton. For the first time in my life, I'm on your side. The rest of the Barclays don't seem to be. For sure, the old lady ain't. You shut your mouth, or I won't be either. Barkley, where will you be if somebody tries persuading the old man? Crowell, even you wouldn't go after an old man and a kid. I used to take a big old fish net, put the dirty clothes in, and throw it all on the stream. You know a Paiute Indian taught me that? Nick, he used to make money washing the miners' clothes, same as I did. Sounds like fun. It's fun talking about it. Wasn't much fun doing it. No, it sure wasn't. That water got mighty cold, didn't it? The worst time was when it rained. In the camp streets, turn to mud, clean up to your knees. And it'd slide into the tents and get into the blankets and everything. Boy, oh boy, sure made sleeping it being uncomfortable. You lived all the time with your grandfather, boy? As long as I can remember. Uh, wasn't there any other uh, kin that you stayed with? Got an uncle in Denver. But I'd never leave, Gramps. Tough things was at times. Oak medals always seemed a long ways off. Those times I thought I'd never see it, but Gramps said we would. I'm sure sorry for what it's costing everybody, but you can't say it's wrong I haven't it. You see some right to that, don't you, Mr. Buckley? How come he doesn't talk like other boys his age? He grew up fast in a mining camp, Nick. Uh -huh. Jubal, let me get you a chair. Thank you, son. You can still make a fair profit if you sell right now, old man. Appreciate your offer. It ain't no offer, it's a warning. That damn going in means work. No sourdough looking for a place for his bones to rot is gonna take no jobs away from us. Is this a private finger-jabbing game, or can anybody play? The lines are drawing mighty fast. And you're pulling them pretty tight, Dutton. I'll take the opposite side of this suck egg any time. Right now. Get him. This way, I knew there'd be trouble. Missed all the fun, Sheriff. Mm -hmm. Clear out! Now, there are two sides of the story. There sure are. And I never thought I'd see a Barkley on the side which was against bringing water into this valley. Oh, now, where? Now, get! Or I'll have you all arrested for disturbing the peace. You can take them two with you. Come on, Jewel. Come on. You couldn't sleep? No. When your father was troubled over something, he used to look for answers this way, too. I could use some answers. Why is it, when we grow up, we hold back instead of coming right out and asking, like you did when you were a little boy? Whatever reasons you have for backing Jubal Tanner are your own. I have two reasons. Len Calder is going to press for a suit of eminent domain. I presumed he would. I'm not sure I'm going to oppose him. If you were sure, would you be down here now staring into the fire? You know what happened to Nick and Heath in town today? Yes, I know, but that isn't what's bothering you. No. 
No, the pettiness I can cope with. But I can't ignore the reason for it. Your friend Jubal has set himself up against the majority. But where there is one, there is a majority of one. And when the rights of the majority take away from the rights of the one, then the many will themselves suffer. The rope. Isn't that the intent of the law? The protection of the individual? Like Jubal Tanner. And your father. No one could take away from him what was his. Not even the railroad who killed him. There are some who say your father's principles killed him. Well, he was a man who would rather die for a principle than live without one. Thank you, lovely lady. I think maybe I can sleep now. I told you I had two reasons for backing Jubal. And I told you whatever reasons you had were your own. Yes, but I want you to know the other one now. A long time ago, when I first married your father, Jubal Tanner married my best friend, Margaret Putman. We came west through the valley together. There was a fire, a fire all around us. Your father was off hunting. Jubal, Margaret, and their son were riding in the wagon. I was riding horseback. When I was thrown, I cried out, Jubal stopped and ran back to help me. The team bolted and... Margaret was killed when the wagon overturned. We buried her in Oak Meadows. And I've never forgotten or forgiven myself because... I should be the one buried there. Because of him, I wasn't. Because of him, you, Nick, Eugene, Audra. That's why, in spite of everything, he must keep Oak Meadows. One more time, one of his sly digs out of Florida. Oh, I don't mean Perkins. His kind you can expect it. Do you know who just cut me colder than a fish? Who? Lucy Collier. I was just dancing with her last week at Otto Miller's barn raising. A lot can happen in a week. Like I didn't know. Seems to me you're changing your mind about all this. Huh? Snubs and sly cracks and nothing compared to what it's going to be before long. Out of blazes with them. Slapping in my stomach. You know how you feel. Like you gotta breathe long and deep or you'll bust. Yeah. How much longer it's gonna take, Gramps? Oh, at the rate we're going or not.
and go back where you come from, mister. The next time we won't pull it down, we'll burn it down. Trying to get the feeling that maybe that old man thinks we didn't mean it, what we told him last night? From the looks of them supplies and his going into Andy's place here, seems to me he aims to make us prove it. Now, ain't that kind of foolish, old man? You might still could get a good price. You're wasting your breath. You may bury me on that land, but you'll never drive me from it. All right. That's the way you want it. Where's your grandfather? In town. Be back directly. He's all right. Yes, ma'am. A little mad, but he's sure all right. Did you get a good look at those men? Yes, sir. They're the ones your brother's tangled with in the saloon. You're sure? I'm sure. Me and Gramps were standing just over there. Well, I'm glad they didn't hurt you. Just frightened you. Callers. Well, I'll greet them a little more personal the next time. That's not the answer, Jubal. It's one they'll remember, though. How many of them were there? Nine, ten. And you're going to try and stand them off alone? Well, I ain't going to crawl. What about Chad? Victoria, I was hoping he could stay with you for a few days. I'm staying here. You're going to do as I tell you, boy. I've been a part of it all till now. You heard your grandfather. Well, if there's going to be more trouble, I guess you'll need some help. Help? What in blazes do you want me to do? I can't be out there guarding him every night. Dutton and the others will be back. I talked to Dutton, he denies it. He's lying and you know it. Equal protection under the law, Sheriff. Protect Jubal Tanner in spite of your personal feelings. It's your duty. Don't tell me my duty. I'm telling you to order Dutton and the others to stay out of Oak Meadows or deputize enough men to see that there's no more trouble there. I can't. Can't or won't? Besides the Barclays, you name me one person who'll stand up for that old man. In this whole valley, you name me one. Dad, they destroyed his house last night. Maybe next time they'll kill him. Is that the way you want it handled? Of course not. I'm against violence the same as you. Then let the people know that. But there's going to be violence. As sure as I'm standing here, there's going to be violence unless that old man settles somewhere else. And if he doesn't, I think they're going to kill him. No, I don't think they are. Len, you know they are. We played poker together too many years. I can read you like a book. I've got no more to say, Jared. If anyone dies, you'll have had a hand in it. I have no part in any of it. You can't tie me into a thing. They'd listen to you. You and all the others who turned their back on me, they'll all have had a hand in it. You'll not lay it on my doorstep, Jared. Then whose blame is it when a handful of perennial troublemakers act as spokesmen for the entire valley? Not the entire valley. I couldn't find one who would stand with us. But it's been three days. Maybe they've decided to let Jubal alone after all. No, they figured to strike sooner or later. Sooner or later. In the meantime, there's all kind of land he can have instead. Who said anything about land? Isn't that what this is all about? No, Brother Nick, it isn't. Nicholas, 
What if this particular piece of land had a very particular meaning to someone close to you? It all depends on what that meaning was. If land weren't the issue, but it were a matter of personal rights, and standing on those rights, no matter how unpopular they may be, is 100% within the law. Well, I'd say uh, one man's personal rights standing alone are just as important as one man's personal rights standing with a crowd. I guess it sometimes takes a while, but eventually the Barclays get around to seeing eye to eye with one another. you back at the house where you belong? I've been here every night since you were. You have? Yes, sir. I've been hiding in that tree clump yonder. Get down behind that wheel where I can see you. And lie flat. Jared Barkley. We didn't figure on you being in on this, Barkley. Anders, brothers. So it won't be just trying to scare off one old man. Take your men and go, Dutton. You're breaking the law. We'll go when he goes. Nobody's going to drive me off this land. Jubal. Jubal, get back. Sorry, Jared. I'm really sorry. You're a little late, Sheriff. Looks much better. Just try not to keep tugging at it. I'll try. 
And tell your uncle to write us that you arrived safely. Yes, ma'am. How about an apple, Chad? Well, everything's in order. Chad, here's your train ticket. And here's a bank draft in your name for all the money your grandfather saved for that land. Thank you, sir. You figure the dam will go in now? Yep, I think so. And you know, Chad, they held a special council meeting in town today. And everyone, the sheriff and even Len Calder, wants you to know how sorry they feel. That's just words. No, more than just words. They want your permission to name it the Jubal Tanner Dam. I don't know. Chad. Chad, you can go on being bitter about what happened. But that's not the way he would have wanted it. I know that for a fact. The Jubal Tanner Dan. You tell him fine. But if it has his name, it better be the best dam in the whole world. <laughs> Boy, you don't talk or act like any kid I ever met. Sure doesn't. Come on, we'll miss your train. Hey, what time Why is this? Would you like to drive this evening? Hey! My stuff! 